Hello everyone, I would just like to say Happy Father's Day and I hope every dad gets spoilt and enjoys their day. Hey, great to have you with us this morning. Welcome to our online service. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Yes, it's Father's Day and it's Mission Sunday. So God bless you, everyone. Thank you for all of our visitors for joining us. Yeah. We want to welcome you from wherever you are, Kerrang, Bort, the whole district, and as a matter of fact, anywhere in the world. Yeah. God bless you and thanks for coming. It's time to shout it out. Shout, shout, I want to shout it. Certainly, we've got to shout out the gospel. We the do. Bible says, go into all the world and preach, preach the, gospel the gospel to every, every creature. creature. We've got missionaries doing that all around the world, and we've got to do it here yep. in our own hometown. Yes, and meanwhile, we are getting the church ready for when we reopen, because as we continue to preach the gospel, we are expecting people to flood in when we open the doors. That's why we're getting it ready. We're getting new carpet, and we... Thank you, thank you for contributing to the Carpet Fund because it is growing. So thank you for contributing to the Carpet. It's coming. Well, that's great. Yeah. Guess what's on this week? On Tuesday night, we have a men's Zoom meeting. Oh. So men, it's time to get ready, get around the phone, get around the computer and get ready for the Zoom meeting on Tuesday. It's going to be wonderful and a great time of fellowship and a great time in the Word. What else is on? Zoom meeting on Wednesday night is a worship Zoom meeting. So we just want musos to come and join us. We'll have some fun together Wednesday night, 7.30. Zoom meetings are great. <laughs> okay, we're also looking forward to online service next week. Keep all the great photos and things coming in. We love your participation. And right now we're going to have a look at some things that have come in from the community. Woo! Happy Father's Day, Dad. Love you heaps. Bye. Hi guys, 
Have a happy Father's Day. Have a wonderful day. Even though we can't go anywhere, still have a wonderful day. And remember, God is in control. Hi all, I'd just like to say a very happy Father's Day to my dad, Peter Gordy. Uh, he's a great dad, he's taught me a lot of things, some good, some bad. Um, also, great dad. But um, also a very happy Father's Day to all you other good dads. Cheers. I just um, wanted to say a few words to you men today in um, thinking of you all on this special day, Father's Day, um, in isolation. Uh, and I just thought you might appreciate a bit of um, muscle today, as in Ford muscle. Um, we built this car back in um, back 13 years ago and it really um, it's really been a great enjoyment to, to, to us our lives our family and to people outside the family and um, we've done like weddings and outings and um, uh, kids that are less, less privileged than ourselves taking them for joy rides on cancer runs um, yeah, it's just, um, yeah, we've just so enjoyed it and, and so have a lot of other people. And it's just a great talking point when you're away. It's like bees to a honeypot. People come up and want to know about it because they all remember them. And, um, but the greatest blessing that I've had is my wonderful family. My, my gorgeous wife, Heather. My four beautiful children and their spouses. And our 16 adorable grandchildren. Um, we've been, the love that's there is just beautiful. But I would just, um, um, in, in, in saying that, I, I said that the, um, the, I'm so thankful for the greatest example of love that our Heavenly Father has set. Um, and may we just all enjoy today and just um, be mindful of our Father's love, our Heavenly Father, that is. Enjoy. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Shadows step out of the grave, break into the wild, and don't be afraid. Run into wide open spaces, grace is waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted, grace is waiting where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom there is freedom where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom there is freedom come out of the dark just as you are into the fullness of his love for the spirit is here let there be free burdens bring all of your scars come back to communion come back to the stars 
stood Run into wide open spaces Races waiting for you Dance like the weight has been lifted Races waiting Where the spirit of the Lord is There is freedom There is freedom the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom there is freedom come out of the dark just as you are into the fullness of his love for oh, the spirit is here let there be freedom let there be freedom shake at the sound of Jesus name lives made whole hearts awake at the sound of Jesus name chains will fall prison shake at the sound of Jesus name lives made whole hearts awake at the sound of Jesus name Of the chaos and crisis, let's continue to show kindness to one another. Continue to connect. Just like a river. So let us believe that God will impart innovative ideas so that we can think creatively, to think outside of the box as to how to reach people and keep them connected in these tricky times. Now you may ask, why call them tricky times? Well, the fact is that they are tricky times and it is important that we stay alert. It's not time for us to fall asleep. We have great promises of resetting, of revival, but these things are not going to happen if we sit back as observers. Oh, revival's coming, let's see if it happens. No, we are to participate with our prayers. We must not get used to being out of the church, out of the presence of God.
We cannot physically meet, but we are still the church. You are the church. The decisions we make now will determine our future. Do not drift away at this time. Do I drift away at this time or do I dig in and be part of the rebuilding? Don't let discouragement or distractions keep you out of God's best. Instead of getting discouraged, be determined to press through and put on courage. Do not pull back at this time, but pour out your prayers and be part of what is coming. You are invited to be part of the great move of God. It is not time to come up with excuses. Oh, I couldn't come to the banquet. I bought a block of land and I have to go and check it out. I bought a new car and I have to go and test drive it. There will always be an opportunity to have excuses why we can't do things. Don't let the excuses stop you from being part of what God is doing at this time and what's coming up. It's important to stay connected to the body. If not connected, it is so easy to drift away, far easier than you think. Don't become like the Israelites who, when released from their prison, built a golden calf and forgot who was leading them. Let's make a decision to stay connected. Be healed from our hurts. If you've been disconnected, get reconnected. Be healed from those hurts, from all the things of the past that have affected us. Restore relationships. Discover your gift and operate in it. We need you. Let's get the church operating as a fully functional body once again. Let's love one another. We need to continue to love one another, reach out to one another. Let's humble ourselves and pray and get a new dream, a new dream for the future. Let's get a new dream for reaching out to the lost and hurting world. To the sky, reach high with me, learn how to fly, fly with me. If there's a storm, there is a reason, could be the Well, it's Mission Sunday, and we've got to pray today for the missionaries and all the people out there that are winning souls in all the various places around the world. And today also, we want to pray for you, your loved ones, and the people that are on your heart that need salvation. I want to encourage you today, think of somebody in your family, in your friends, mm. or somebody that you know nearby that needs salvation. And as we pray, you call their name before heaven, and we will pray. Father, I thank you that you are drawing people by your spirit. Amen. I thank you, Lord, that you died to pay the price for everything that everyone's done wrong. And Lord, we thank you that that price was enough. 
and we claim salvations. We thank you, Lord, for people coming back. We thank you, Lord, for salvations in the name of Jesus. And right now as we're praying, now call the name of the person that's on your mind or people. And Father, we pray for our loved ones. We pray for our friends. We pray for those that are on our heart. Yes. And we ask today, Father, that you will move powerfully and wonderfully in their lives. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that brings conviction. And we pray, Father, that you would open their eyes. Cool. And in Jesus' name, we command all the darkness powers that would put blindfolds over them to be removed Lift and all the, the deception, the lies and the fear of getting saved that comes against them. We mm. bind it up in Jesus' thank name you, and we thank claim you, their salvation today yes, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And Father, we also pray for our people on the mission field and we pray for our missionaries, Father, that you would give them strategies, that you would give them wisdom, that you would cause great provision to come in for them and that they would see wonderful fruit coming to pass in all the fields where they're serving you in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. And those that are not able to be on the field at this time, Father, I pray that you would give them strategies, give them wisdom, let the work continue in Jesus name and father we pray for all those that are injured or sick at this time yes, or in hospital we pray for rapid healing mm. total recovery yes, we stand Lord. against all forms of cancer and injuries yes, we Lord, pray father Jesus, for broken Lord. bones to be healed yep. we pray father for all symptoms to disappear for all tumors to shrink and for all growths to go and we're asking today father for every one of us to receive a complete healing in Jesus' name. Yes, I pray for someone with a sore knee. I just command healing to come into that knee. Whatever the problem is, Father, I thank you for healing right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for someone with varicose veins. God, I pray that you would move in that situation and cause there to be healing. Pain leaves in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. And someone with the trouble across the back of your wrist, right near the knuckles on the back of your hand, I mean, Lord, right near the Lord. knuckles, we just claim healing for that right now and all repetitive strain injuries to just miraculously heal in Jesus' name. And pain, we bind your power over every person listening to this. You spirit of pain, I bind you right now. I loose you from people. I command arthritic pain to leave. Yep. I command Thank pain you, in the abdomen, you, pain in the limbs, the legs, the arms and the joints Thank you, to Jesus. Go, go in Jesus, in Jesus name. name. Thank you, Lord, for healing. Thank and you. headaches, you be healed mm. in Jesus, Jesus name. name. Amen. And as we worship God today, mm. let's open our hearts to God. And as the music continues and as we press through to God, keep receiving the healing that we've prayed for and keep seeing and visualizing the souls that you've claimed for God's kingdom mm. in church, worshiping God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, truly connect with God as we sing this song. And He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He loves you and just allow His presence to, to wash over you as we sing this song. What a beautiful name. The name of Jesus. You are the word the beginning. One with God the Lord. Hidden glory in creation Now revealed in you, our Christ What a beautiful name it is What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus Christ, my King What a beautiful name it is Nothing compares to this What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus You didn't want heaven without us So Jesus you brought heaven Sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing comes. What a wonderful name it is, the name 
is it today and that we come and remember and celebrate our fathers whom I have heard have gone above and beyond even their own expectations of what modern fatherhood looks like over the past several months and I just want to pay tribute to you and all our fathers we love you and appreciate you where would we be without you so thank you so very much there is much to remember and to be thankful for on this, the Lord's Day. So let's also take time to acknowledge the work of others involved in missions that have devoted uh, time, money and effort into expanding God's kingdom. We appreciate and recognise sacrifices often made, freedoms abandoned in many instances, sea changes, tree changes, um, flight changes. But over the years, much has been written, volumes in fact, by many church historians covering church history, growth and Christianity. However, a perfect example for the new covenant Christian, I, um, I can see, is in the book of Acts and uh, even in, um, I think, chapter 11, that one comes comes to mind about uh, verses 19 maybe is a good start the Jerusalem and the Antioch church where many after the persecution of Stephen 
when scattered abroad preaching the word. Now, if we can imagine every Christian telling his neighbour, servant telling his master, women telling the children, um, even slave to fellow slave, how amazing that would be. And then in verses uh, 29, it says that the disciples, each according to his ability, decided to provide help for the brothers living in Judea. It says, This they did, sending their gift to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. Now I've heard it said, Christian, the mission field is where you are standing. So bloom where God plants you. Every Christian believer, a missionary, inflamed by the love of Christ, to convert his fellow men. So, as it is the Lord's Day and Mission Sunday today, let's gather as the church born of the Holy Spirit, bringing our offerings to the Lord. And I've also heard it said that the hand that gives gathers, and when we give to God, we are taking the gift out of one of his hands and putting it in to the other. So let's take a moment to pray together this morning. Lord, bless the seeds and the seeds planted to be multiplied all over this land and beyond this land according to your plans and purposes. Bless the hands that give selflessly and generously and I ask you special touch on those watching this service this morning that are in need, Lord, whether it's physical, whether it is financial, spiritual, Lord, emotional, work-related. Father, provide for them as only you can. And Lord, we do thank you for those many hands and feet that make up your church today. Bless them all mightily, Lord, as we thank them with our extra gifts and offerings this morning. And I'd just like to finish by saying, and God, to God be the glory forever and ever. Have a great day. Have a great week. And I thank you for being with us this morning. Amen. Hey Eternity Centre, this is Dom Shorthouse in Batambang, Cambodia. Uh, I'm just at the gym where I spend most of my time these days, uh, coaching and just helping people get fitter. Our motto is do life better. And we try to help people, not just physically, but through discipleship and helping them through difficult circumstances. We've built a really great community here and this has been such a blessing to be able to you know, meet people from all walks of life. We get a lot of Cambodians who are not Christian. We get a lot of uh, expats who are here for different reasons. And it's been such a joy over the last five years just to, to reach people. Uh, I know that it is, uh, it's Father's Day in Australia. Actually, one of the blessings of being a missionary here and being married to an American is I actually get two Father's Days every year. So this is my second Father's Day for the year. And one of the things that has been a real, uh, really amazing opportunity for ministry but that has also given me so much uh, joy and satisfaction is, is being a surrogate father to a lot of Cambodians here because of the Khmer Rouge, just because of the history of Cambodia. A lot of young Cambodians don't have a great relationship with their parents and a lot of the traditions and the expectations here on young Cambodians can cause a lot of intergenerational problems. And often I'm able to, to do some amazing ministry and really share God's love with young Cambodians just by listening, by giving them value, telling them they're amazing, telling them that, that I see them and that 
you know, I love them, that God loves them, it, it can make a really big difference because you meet a lot of Cambodians who've never been told that by their parents. They've never been told that they matter. They've never been told that they are important or even that they're loved. So it has been so great that God has given me this chance to, to be a father to so many young people. And it really is something that brings me a lot of joy and really helps me understand God's love for us by showing God's love to other people. Hope you guys have an amazing day. Thank you so much for your love and prayers and support. And yeah, we love you, Eternity Center. Thank you so much. Oh, I am Jerry, and this is Jesse. I, I love my father because he's always there for us. He, he always cooks meals for us. And even though we might not be grateful for him, he's still our father, and we love him very much. Jesse. Uh, first of all, what my brother forgot to say is Happy Father's Day oh, and that we love our father and he's there for us no matter what. He takes care of us and even if we may not see it in the background, he does what he needs to be done to leave us have a good life. Thank you. Hello there, good morning and uh, welcome. Thank you for tuning with us this morning for our online service. My name is Fred. And uh, I want to say welcome. Before I continue to share, I just want to take this chance and to wish all the fathers a happy Father's Day. As a father, I'm happy to be a dad and uh, I'll do anything to protect my family. Today I want to invite you for communion service as we celebrate this time. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. I just want to encourage us that uh, there's one that who offered his life for us on the cross. And in the Bible, in uh, the New King James Version, John 15, verse 13, the Bible says that greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. And I know there are so many fathers who have offered their life out there to protect their families. But the greatest of all is Jesus Christ, who laid down his own life for ourselves. So today, as we celebrate his life, as we celebrate his journey, as we celebrate things we did for us, we want to tell him thank you. Thank you for his protection. Thank you for offering us life. And to invite us to join us online, to have your juice ready, and your bread ready, and just say, Father, thank you for that. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you for laying down your own life for us, for the sacrifice that you gave us on the cross, that as you share your brokenness, And as you said, this Jewish that symbolizes the blood that you shed on the cross, Father. I pray, Lord, that may you guide us, may you continue to lead us, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let us eat together. Let us drink together. Thank you. God bless you. You say I am strong 
have every failure, God, you have every victory. It's Father's Day. Now, I'm not a father. I've never had any children. But let me tell you a story that's as close to having a child as I've got. I have a nephew. And one day I was at my nephew's father's house and his church to preach. And I went in there on Sunday afternoon to get ready for the night service. And I was walking up and down amongst the chairs. And as I walked, for some reason, my hand went like that. My other hand went in my pocket. And I was walking backwards and forwards, leaning back a bit and praying and praying and praying for the service. And I walked up one row of chairs, down another. Then I got conscious of a presence behind me. And as I was praying, I looked around and there was my little nephew right down behind me with his hand in his pocket doing this as well, walking along behind me. Now, how did he learn how to do that? <laughs> Nobody taught him that in school. Another story comes to mind, and this one's about a little girl and her mother. One day when Rosanna and I had travelled to Sydney, we were staying with a family. And in the morning we came out, probably after a concert or something the night before, we came out early in the morning and the mother was there preparing breakfast and then her daughter walked out, probably about, I don't know, five or six years old or even younger. And she walked right up to her mother, put her hand on her hip, and went like this, you're a very naughty girl, up to her mother. And I laughed to myself and I said to myself, I wonder how she learned to do that. Because there's no way in the world you could teach her in a school classroom at that age how to act in such an amazing style. How did she learn to do it? 
I'm sure it's obvious, but I laughed to myself. I knew what it meant. So today we're going to read from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5, that fits right in with the theme of it being Father's Day. It says, Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. Let's pray. Father, as we open the Word of God today, we're praying and asking that you will flood the eyes of our understanding with the light of your revelation today, Father, that you will show us exactly how we can imitate our Father and be the sons and daughters of God in full measure in Jesus' name. Amen. So today's theme is how to have the ideal father-son or father-daughter relationship. We could put it like this, how to be a mature son or daughter of God. And I've written down five steps. Number one, you've got to be born into father's family. Or we say in the Bible, as Jesus said, you receive the new birth. Number two, you've got to be like your father by watching and imitating him. Number three, you have to be led by the spirit of revelation. And number four, you grow or mature to full adoption. And I'll explain what that means as we go. And number five is when you lay your life down for your father's vision or his dream to come to pass. And I believe, you know, if we give our focus to God's word and you give your attention to what God's Word says today in these final moments of this online service, that by the time it concludes, you'll know how to be a fully functioning, fully mature son of the living God or daughter. Okay, so number one is, be born into Father's family. This is what Jesus said. Now remember, this is not some church or some Christian making up the term born again Christian. This is the lips of Jesus himself, the only one who really knows what he's talking about. Because he did come from heaven, he did die, and he rose from the dead. Do you know anybody else that could fulfill that requirement to be an expert on things to do with God? I don't think so. So this is what Jesus said. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? He was obviously thinking physical birth, but that's not what Jesus was talking about. So in verse 5, Jesus said this, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So this is clearly a spiritual birth he's talking about, and it's needed to enter God's kingdom. It's needed to enter God's family, and it's needed to be able to see what your father's doing so that you can be his child. Amen. And it says here, that which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. John 3, 7 says, do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. And that applies to all of us. I've been born again. Rosanna's been born again. Most of the people that are called Christians have been born again. But if not, we're going to show you by the end of this service exactly how you can be born again. It's not hard to do because Jesus has done all the hard yards and made it a very simple process for us to receive his new birth. The second thing is once you're born again, you imitate your father as a beloved child, which is just an old fashioned word for much loved child, a child that's loved, a child that knows what love is, watches their father and imitates. Let's read again what it says in Ephesians chapter five. We're going to read verses one and two this time. Therefore be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love. If you imitate God, it's obvious that you'll walk in love because God is love. So 
How do you imitate God like a child? The first thing is to accept and receive his love for you. And I remember, I love my father. And he would work away from home for nearly the whole week before we moved on the farm. After that, he was never away again. When he came back, we climbed all over him and sat on him and we wanted him to give us horse rides on his foot. It was fantastic fun. It was great to have dad at home. And we need to be like that with our heavenly father. We constantly have in the Bible the invitation for his born again children to come into his throne room, to come into the secret place, to come before him, to listen to his voice. And in the picture, Given in the story of the prodigal son, the father just wanted his son at home sitting at his table. And Jesus says clearly, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come into him and we'll sup together. And then in the book of John, he says, we will come in. Father and I will come in and we will make our abode with him. God wants you at his table. He wants you in his secret place, in his throne room. He wants you. You know, there was a story Years ago, a picture came out and it was the great president of America, John F. Kennedy, I think it was. And he was there in the Oval Office, you know, on earth. It's a seat of great power for a moment, just picturing being like God's throne room, a seat of great power. And to get in there, you had to pass clearances and you had to do protocols and you had to keep your distance. But out from under the desk, there was a cheeky little face looking. And this was the president's son. He didn't have to go through any protocols to be there. He was just there playing around under dad's desk. And that's the invitation you have at the throne room, God's secret place and God's table when he feeds you. So draw close to God and he will draw near to you. What do you do when you get there? You don't have to do all the talking. You just watch him. And that's exactly what Jesus did. You know, how did my nephew learn to pray like me? He just watched me and the next thing, nature took over (laughs) and he was doing it. How did the little girl learn to go like that and do all those actions at the same time? She watched her mother and it just happened. (laughs) Amen. It just happened. Little kids imitate parents they love. And all we need to do to fulfill this step is to invest time with God and watch him. Let's listen to what Jesus said about this himself in John chapter 5, verses 19 and 20. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do. Notice that he doesn't initiate it himself. He watches his father and what he sees He does. Going on. For whatever he does, meaning the father, the son also does in like manner. Verse 20. The reason for this is for the father loves the son. And it doesn't matter what your relationship with your human father has been like, whether he loved you or not. Your heavenly father loves you. He's ambitious for you. He's got plans for your life. He wants you to be loved. He wants to lavish you with good things and with blessings. He wants you blessed. He wants you enjoying your life. He wants you to be a princess if you're a female. He wants you to have a meaningful, significant life of fulfillment. But most of all, he wants you at his table. He wants you receiving his input, imitating him by seeing what he does. And so that's what Jesus said. The father loves the son and shows him all things that he himself does. Amen. It's a relationship of love. It's time together. It's the father opening his heart to reveal who he is. And then the son imitates. How? Why? It's just natural. And you must remember that in their culture, they saw things differently. They saw adoption differently and they saw father-son relationship in a fractionally different way to what we do. In our culture, if we want to prove if someone's a son, they always insist on a DNA test because in our Western thinking, it's a biological relationship and it's true. But in the Eastern mindset in Jesus' day, perhaps as much as it was a biological relationship, 
It was a relationship of a son does what his father does. In other words, he has his values. Often he did the same work. He has the same mannerisms. He speaks the same language. He holds to the same understanding and worldview of things. And so in the East, if someone doesn't follow in his father's footsteps, you may have heard the phrase, you are no longer my son. Now, biologically speaking, that's impossible. But if we see sonship as they did in Bible times, as somebody who is like their father, then it makes perfect sense if he's not obeying, following, imitating, and walking in the footsteps of his father. So many times Jesus said, I am the son of God and I prove it by doing the works of my father. In other words, he was saying, I'm God's son because I act like God. And that's also how we can be God's sons in our generation now. It's by watching him and acting like him. And it's not that hard to do. Amen. The more you watch, the more you look, the more you will act like him. Now, another aspect of this is we can see God in the spirit. But the other aspect is that sometimes we can see someone who is very Christ like. And even the Apostle Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Children imitate their parents. And for us to imitate God, we've got to see him in the Bible. Look at those stories of what Jesus did. And the more time we invest there, the more time we invest looking at people who are imitating Jesus, the more we will become like him without even realizing it's happening. <laughs> You're a very naughty girl. It will happen. Amen. It's the way we are created. Number three today is, You've got to be led by the Holy Spirit, the spirit of revelation. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 23, contains his prayer. Verse 16, making mention of you in my prayer. So this is a legitimate New Testament spirit led prayer that you can safely pray for yourself. And I'd say every day, constantly pray this prayer. And he says this, the eyes of of your understanding being enlightened. And we know that Proverbs chapter two talks about this. We need to cry out for understanding. We need to pray for God's spirit of wisdom and revelation that the eyes of our understanding, our inner eyes might be flooded with light. Without that revelation, we will never flow as a son and daughter of God because we need that light. You get born again to have your eyes open and the authority to see, but you need this gift of the spirit of wisdom and revelation to see what's going on. And when you see God by that spirit, just like Jesus, he only did what he saw with his father. So can you and you can go around imitating God by this spirit. Amen. Now listen to this interesting scripture that goes right with this. And this one's found in Romans 8, 14. And it says, as many as are led by the spirit of God, these are sons of God. And that's generic for sons and daughters. What does it take to be a son of God? to be led by the Spirit of God. And as we pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the eyes of our insight being opened and we get messages from God, we see pictures with God and Jesus only did what he saw with his father, we can operate the same way. And remember, it's not talking about biology. This is spiritual and it's talking about those that imitate or are led by the spirit of wisdom and revelation are the ones that are the sons of God on earth. Amen. And number four, that you grow and mature to full adoption. Let me explain this. So in our culture, adoption can happen to an infant from when it's even one second old. It can be given up for adoption and somebody else adopts the baby. You know, we go through a legal procedure in our nation. You adopt the baby and bring it home and raise it as your child. But in Bible times, and we call it the Greco-Roman culture and society of their day, 
adoption was meaning something slightly different. A child would be born, and I'll just read a little bit of this in context so you can see what it says. This is Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. Now I say that an heir, now that's when he calls him an heir, that's a partaker of the inheritance, or it's the father's, you could say, number one son even. An heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave. A slave does the father's will, he gets told what to do, and he does it. And it says, even though in his destiny the heir is destined to be master of all, he's going to take over this family, this business, whatever. But he's under the guardians and stewards. You could say he's under teachers and tutors and people that look after him until the time appointed by the father. And, you know, that might be when he's 21 or 30, but most probably the father appoints a time and says, when he's ready, I'll give him full status of sonship. And when he gets the full status of sonship, you see it in the prodigal son, the father put a ring on his finger. In those days, it was like when you had the authority to sign in your father's name. It's a signet ring. It could be put into wax and create like a signature, the authority to spend money, to buy things, to make contracts or whatever. This authority was not given to the son till he had learned, till he had demonstrated his humility, till he had learned his father's culture and learned how to walk in his footsteps. And then he would act in his father's stead because he had the same spirit, understanding, mind, culture, worldview and attitudes and the same character, you could say. And in their culture, when he got to that stage, it was called adoption. And maybe it would be accompanied by a great ceremony in which the father would introduce him to their society and say, this son of mine now is adopted into full sonship and he can now operate in my authority. And you all know now he comes to your business. You treat him exactly as you would me. Amen. Isn't that what we all want as Christians? And that's what's promised to us. That's what ours is. Amen. We can heal the sick like Jesus, cast out demons. We can preach the gospel. We can get 3,000 saved like Peter. We can plant churches like Paul. We can do all of these amazing things by growing to maturity as sons and going around as God's sons doing exactly what God wants done. And if you're in business, you can hear from God and he can give you unusual favor that's totally unfair, but it can gain you contracts, can win you friends, that can give you great favor and cause all kinds of opportunities to come your way. As a parent, you can have that same knowing about children. Why are they crying when they're little? Why are they misbehaving? Why are they like they are? What input do they need as they're growing? You can do it as a leader in church. You can do it as a leader in the community. Whether you're a politician, a council person or whatever, you can have God's wisdom all day, every day. And remember, God can't be cornered. Amen. So growing to this place of maturity where God says that person fully represents me. They're operating for me and as me imitating me, the authority of Jesus is working in their life. And when they lay their hands on the sick, they will recover. When they go to different places, they speak my word in my authority and all of heaven backs it up. Amen. So this is what Paul says to conclude all of this. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you'll not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. If you're led by the spirit, you're not under the law. But if we live by the Spirit, let's also walk in the Spirit. Because remember, the sons of God are those who imitate their beloved Father like Jesus. The sons of God are those who are led by the Spirit, who walk in the Spirit, and they do what God would do in the same situation. And therefore, they're operating in the name of God or in the name of Jesus in our case. Amen. So he says, therefore, as we have opportunity, let's do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Amen. So how do we become a mature son or daughter of God today into the full level of Greco-Roman adoption? Number one, you must be born again into father's family and receive his new birth. And if you like, that's the DNA part of it, or the spiritual DNA. Number two, 
To be like your father, you've got to watch him, invest time at sitting at his feet, watching him, watch him through the word, watch him in another godly person, keep watching and then imitate what you see. And the more you watch, you know, the more you read Jesus' stories and the more you listen to the word of God, the more you'll be inclined to just do it. Number three, be led by the spirit of revelation. You've got to crave this, you've got to desire it, you've got to cry out for it and pray for it. And then you'll see things from God as you meditate in his word and as you pray and as you worship, and he will show you things to imitate. So we must be led by the spirit of revelation. Number four, grow to maturity, to full adoption as a son. Now, what's the application of this? I'll give the application. It's a scripture that says, do not be a forgetful hearer or a hearer only. Be a doer of God's word. Now today, if you're not born again, you can't make it even into step number one. But the good news for you is you can be born again today. I'm going to read again those important scriptures. This is what Jesus said. Unless one is born again, he can't see the kingdom of God. So if you're a child, you can't imitate what you can't see. And then he said, unless you're born of the water and spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So you need to be born again to get into God's family. And then he said, you must be born again. This is an instruction from Jesus. Now we combine that with confessing that Jesus is Lord, that believing Jesus has risen from the dead, as we see in the scriptures. And then the first act of obedience after that is to be baptized. Because the Bible says, if you believe, and are baptized, you'll be saved. But right now, step number one is easy because Jesus really did die for you. He died for your sins. He rose from the dead. He's done everything necessary to make it so possible for you to be born again. See, God has put everything out of the way that he can. So there's nothing left from his side between him and you. But all you have to do is receive his forgiveness, receive his new birth, Confess Jesus is Lord, believe you're born again, that Jesus rose from the dead and you will be saved in the next few moments. So I want everybody to say this prayer after me. Everyone say this prayer. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I apologize for everything I've done wrong, how I've hurt you and how I have hurt others. Today, in Jesus' name, I receive a new birth. I put off the old. I put on the new. I receive Jesus as my Savior. I confess Jesus is my Lord. And I'm going to follow him from this day forward by walking in the Spirit. I'm going to imitate my Father from this day forward as his beloved son or daughter. In Jesus' name, I'm born again. I'm a new creation. Jesus is Lord. And I believe he rose from the dead. In Jesus' name. Now, if you said that prayer, just relax. I'm going to pray for you. Father, I pray now over everybody that imitated through that prayer today and ask that right now, by the Spirit of God, that they are born again, that their inner eyes would be open and that revelation would begin to flow in their life, that they could see the kingdom of God, that they could enter the kingdom of God, that they would know Jesus is their Saviour, that the Holy Spirit is their spirit of wisdom and revelation. He's guiding their life and that this day their name is written in heaven, that they are no longer estranged from God, but God is now their very own Father in Jesus' mighty name. And I pray today, Father, that you would lead them, that you would guide them and lead them to grow to full maturity as sons and daughters of God in a very quick time in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you today. It's been so good to have you in our online service and to be participating with us. 
We look to your participation next week. Again, we say a very happy Father's Day to all the fathers, and I'm sure there's more for you to enjoy in this movie. And also, we're saying during the week this week, we have a men's meeting. We have a women's meeting and we have lots of great things for you on Facebook and you can watch this again. You can see the full version of my message each week on Facebook and on YouTube. God bless you. Participate during the week and remember, ring someone up, encourage them, check on people, see how they're doing. Let's believe God together for a great move of his spirit. Invite people to watch the online service because God is so great and when we all get together and share what we share on the service so much happens amen god bless you thanks for listening happy father's day <laughs> <laughs>